Good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bon dia. Good. Uh, to start my presentation, I have a few questions for you. And I'd like you to show by hand how many of you have a national security strategy in your countries? In your country, how many of you have a national security strategy? I see hands are going down again. <laughs> Even in development phase, let's put it this way. Okay, good. How many of you have read your national security strategies? Okay, how many of you use it in your daily work? Okay, I see only four hands here. That's uh, encouraging. Uh, we'll have this conversation shortly. During the first week, during the first week uh, of this program, uh, we analyzed Africa's security threats and challenges and discussed security dynamics. This week is all about how to respond to the security challenges, threats uh, that we've discussed last week. Uh, to start, I would like to focus on the concept of security, uh, just uh, for a little bit. And I have two quotes here that will help me uh, frame the argument I have for the importance of inclusive, hear me out, inclusive and effective security strategies. Uh, the first one is by uh, the late Kofi Annan. Uh, he said, humanity will not enjoy development without security and will not enjoy security without development and will not enjoy either without the respect for human rights. And the second one is by retired U.S. retired General uh, Dempsey. And he said, contemporary strategic thinkers must be agile and adaptive with the requisite values and strategic vision and critical thinking is critical thinking skills in order to keep pace with the changing security uh, strategic environment. And we've had a lot of discussion regarding that uh, yesterday. You can agree with me that the desire for security is universal. And that uncertainty and danger are the dominant features of human existence. That's one. And if there's no threat, the need to guarantee security will disappear. I'm sure you can agree with me on those two uh, principles. For many people around the world today and in Africa, the world is, a full, of, the world is full of insecure uh, places, uh, full of threats of many fronts. Protracted conflict, violent conflict, natural disasters, persistent poverty, epidemics, economic downturns, all this undercuts prospects for peace, stability, and sustainable development. And we've talked about this quite a bit uh, for the past, uh, uh, I'll say, seven days. Such crises are complex, entailing multiple forms of human insecurity. When they overlap, they can grow exponentially, spilling in all aspects of people's lives, destroying entire communities and nat crossing national uh, borders. So security is the core purpose of the states. In the name of security, uh, people and governments go to war. They take actions where intended and where unintended outcomes have become difficult to handle. Simply put, the idea of security is summed up by the United Nations as freedom from fear, freedom from wants, and dignity. In this way, security is not only associated with the prerogative of the states, but it's also seen from the point of view of the people. Uh, in that, seen from the, view of, uh, from the point of view of people, security often referred as human security in the lens of the UN has seven dimensions. Economic security, food security, health security, environmental security, personal security, community security, and political security. Now that I have touched on the concept of security, let me move to the uh, next uh, concept, national security. So I'm taking you from security to national security, then we get to national security strategy. National security strategy, sorry, national, I'll go back one. National security has been described as the ability of a state 
to cater for the protection and the defense of its citizens. If you take a look at the Nigerian uh, security strategy, the Nigerian government defines national security as a guarantee of the well-being of citizens and the stability of the state, citizens and states. In the Liberia National Security Strategy, it is defined as the process of ensuring that the protection of all Liberian citizens, its sovereignty, its culture, its territorial integrity, and its economic well-being. These broad definitions mean that security goes beyond the traditional focus on, uh, uh, on the military and the government and focuses all, instead on the people, on the citizens of a state. And so to ensure national security, governments rely on the instrument of national power. And you hear this again from me. And these instruments include diplomacy, information, military, and economic. So then, the main question for us this morning is, how can we formulate effective and implementable national security strategies in the face of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, as General uh, Joyce Sitini noted yesterday? To answer this question, the Africa Center embarked on what I call an exploratory uh, mission. Uh, we convened a number of uh, regional workshops here in DC, uh, in Botswana for Southern Africa, uh, in Senegal for West Africa, in Tunisia for North Africa, and a number of workshops virtually to understand how security strategies are drafted or reviewed on the African continent. We also commissioned uh, a number of case studies to better understand the process of drafting national security strategies on the continent. The result of this mission, and I'll tell you what came out of the mission. One, the delivery of security to, to the state and citizens will continue to be a daunting task facing nations in Africa. That's one. The second one, in some instances, states themselves have become sources of insecurity. The third one is that most African states do not have national security strategies. Some are just what I call aspirations, not strategies. The fourth one is that most African countries continue to utilize traditional and state-centric, and in most cases, regime-centric security approaches. And these approaches are largely guided by defense policies or defense white papers that continue to aim at addressing the traditional and irrelevant security threats that, that we face on the continent. And the last one, there is a considerable wealth of evidence that shows that a well-designed, inclusive, I'm gonna repeat this again, a well-designed, inclusive, and transparent process of developing a national security strategy enables decision makers to better confront the security threats and improve effective delivery of security to all citizens and states. Again, to answer the question, after numerous consultations, as I noted, the Africa Center came up with one theory of change. And I hope we'll have uh, the time to discuss uh, this theory uh, here and also in our discussion group. And it goes uh, this way. If African leaders and practitioners in the security sector, as yourself here, you develop or review and implement your own ownership, national security strategies through an inclusive, transparent, and participatory process, then you'll be better able to manage security resources and advance strategic visions that improve the security and the safety of citizens in your countries. And so the key words here are ownership, inclusive, transparent, and participatory. And I'll come back to that again. So then, what is national security strategy? A national security strategy is a product of a national discussion and dialogue about, the important, uh, about what is important for the immediate security context and shared priorities of a society. It explains how a nation defines security and safety 
and how he intends to achieve it. It is a document that describes the fundamental values of a society or priorities of a society in providing for national security and public safety. It is the arts and science of developing, applying, and coordinating the instrument of national power. And I know that the, the, the instrument of national power, diplomatic, economic, military, and information, to achieve objectives that contribute to national security, as I described it. And lastly, it is a practical document that allows all elements of the security sector to align their own specific strategies and internal policies to achieving the, these objectives in respect of these values. So what we have seen on the continent is that a lot of countries have sectorial strategies, right? You have a strategy on maritime security, a strategy on counterterrorism, you have a strategy uh, focusing on different uh, areas, but you do not necessarily have an overarching strategy that looks over all the strategies. And that conversation will also come up later in the afternoon when we talk about resources, because it impacts resources, and we've talked about this the entire uh, time we've been here. Because national security and public safety are sensitive, and they are sensitive to subjects about which people can disagree, the process, again, the focus here is on the process. The process of discussing alternatives and arriving at consensus for a shared national vision is fundamentally important. And so if we know what security is, we know what national security is, and we know what national security strategy is, then what is national security strategy development? Now, a national security strategy development is a process of policy making about how to better deliver states and citizen security. As such, it provides an opportunity to forge a new social contract between a government and its people. So when you have a strategy, it's supposed to help you, the state, and, the gov uh, and, and its people forge a better or a more strong uh, social contract. The development and execution of national security strategy demands the ability to think critically and strategically, as we've been discussing the entire week. Thinking strategically entails applying the fundamentals or the fundamental elements of strategic logic, which are, one, we need to analyze the strategic situation, the challenge and the context. Uh, part of the work that we, uh, uh, ACSS gave you before you came in was for you to analyze the strategic situations in your countries. The second one is to define the desired end. What is the desired end for the states? To include first, uh, defining the overarching political aim, because it's a political document. And then specific object, uh, objectives required to achieve it. Then identifying and developing the means, the resources, the capabilities to bring to bear. And lastly, designing the ways to use the means to achieve the desired end. And then finally, assessing the cost, the risk, associated with the strategy. While these five elements of strategic logic may appear linear, developing a national security strategy is much more complex, multidimensional, iterative, and often imperfect or, uh, 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 or imperfect. And Dr. General Malongo will discuss that uh, shortly. The key to developing an effective an implementable national security strategy lies in the ability of the drafting team to consider the ends with reference to the available means, possible ways, and likely risk and cost. So some of the questions that strategists or the team spearheading the strategy develop, uh, development process must ask include, let me go back, the definition of security. In your context, how do you define security? the dimensions of security that you would like to address in your national security strategy, uh, the security concerns that all members of your society and citizens have, uh, what is the process for identifying the threats and responses you're looking for? Who does it? What are the past policies and strategies that you have? And what are the states of the implementation of these strategies? What is the perception of citizens about the security and the safety in the country? Uh, what is the status of international or regional commitments in your countries? And who is responsible for the oversights 
and accountability in your uh, country. What are some of the legal mandates? How clear are they? Uh, what is the process for cooperation or coordination among the security sector? What is the current level of capacity or preparedness? Are there gaps in personnel and training? And then lastly, what is the status of resources available both in the short, in the mid, and in the long uh, term? Quickly, why national security strategy, though, especially in the African context? Well, in recognition of the continuing gap uh, between existing approaches to security sector reform and the deficits in the delivery of governance and secu of security in many of our uh, countries, in many of the African Union member states, uh, the African Union has not only acknowledged the need for the development of national security strategies as a prerequisite for security sector reform, but has also requested its member states to produce such strategies through a fully consultative and participatory process. So the African Union uh, uh, has asked all our member states to actually have a national security strategies. Quickly, why have a national security strategy, and how do national security strategies contribute to good governance, which is one of the reasons why we're here? The short answer, though, is because it is a tool that helps promote good governance and deliver development and security to citizens of a state. Having a national security strategy defines a broad vision for national security, which is responsive to people's diverse needs. It provides guidance for effective and policy uh, implementation. It enhances security sector efficiency and accountability. We talked about this quite a bit yesterday. Uh, it builds domestic consensus on security provisions. It develops a logical pathway to link the national goals on one side and the national resources over time. And lastly, a coherent, transparent, and publicly available, I'm going to say that again, publicly shared national security uh, strategy sends a message to regional and international partners about states, uh, states' value, their concerns and intentions in the security and defense, and often charts a specific intention for regional and international cooperation. This also opens communications that can prevent conflict and facilitate international cooperation. Uh, the last question that I will address uh, in this uh, section is uh, what are, some, what are uh, some of the challenges in the process of developing and implementing national security strategies? And what uh, will be the role of leadership in overcoming uh, these challenges? Quickly, the challenges that I would like to discuss briefly, the first one is the conflict of leadership. And I'm sure uh, General Molongo will, note, uh, will speak to that as well. That whenever there's conflict of leadership, especially uh, when it comes to uh, the entity that will spearhead the strategy, is it going to be the Ministry of Defense? Is it going to be the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Is it going to be the State House? That's usually where the, start, the process starts. And so that conflict of leadership can also impact the implementation of the strategy. The second one is the lack of political will and support. In places where there is no political will to have a strategy, uh, sometimes because of issues of accountability, then uh, you cannot or you, you will not have the strategy or implement it. Uh, the next one is the inability to involve the beneficiar beneficiaries. The, the strategy is, you know, the, the beneficiaries are the people. And you hear me talk about this again, the people. And the people have to have a say in what the strategy uh, is looking at. And sometimes uh, the say will happen during the consultative uh, process. And General Molongo will speak to that as well in the case of Zambia. Unrealistic goal setting. That's another challenge when it comes to uh, the drafting or the development of the strategy and the implementation. Uh, the next one is the confidence deficiency. And the last one is the inadequate planning and resources. Next, how could we create a conducive environment for formulating and implementing a national security strategy? I think the first one is strategic understanding of the issues. If we do not understand the issues that we have, how could we draft the strategy? The need for a national foresight ecosystem to have a context-specific setup. 
Uh, we've discussed this quite a bit in my discussion group where strategies often are imported and do not necessarily fit the context or uh, uh, no ownership in the process. The next one is the definition of a broader national security vision. A national security vision that's not only focused on the military, but it's also focused on the people. Uh, the third one is national ownership and leadership. I think this is my big one, national ownership and uh, leadership. Where there's no ownership, there's no implementation. Where there's no leadership, there's no implementation. They need to have a buy-in uh, in, uh, amongst high-level decision makers. The importance of a participatory and inclusive process. I think I, I, I would like to hammer on this uh, more and more. The process has to be participatory and inclusive. A national security strategy that's developed only in the Ministry of Defense is a defense strategy. A national security strategy that's not developed in many other arenas or in the, in the, in, uh, with uh, other departments, it's not a national security strategy. In the, in, the, in the case of some countries that we have visited, even the Ministry of Health was involved in the process because health is also a security issue. The approach or process must be holistic and inclusive and transparent. The involvement of the parliament, we noted that yesterday, from the beginning of the process is key. In some cases, the parliamentarians themselves might not be in the room, but involving the staffers in the room is quite important, especially in our context on the African, in the African continent. Flexibility and adaptability based on resources, very important. And then lastly, leveraging partnership. Who are the right partners? Who are those partners that you want to engage in the process of drafting uh, your strategies? My last comment, I'm going to leave you with the five Ps. If everything I said you don't remember and you have to write a report and you go back to uh, your, your countries, uh, I'd like you to focus on these five Ps. Uh, the first one is the process. The process of drafting the strategy is very, very, very important. If you fail the process, you fail the implementation. The second one is the product. The product is very important. What you come out with is very important. How you put it out in the public is also very important. Is your product classified? Do you have a version that the people have access to? The next one is the priorities that you have. How do you classify the priorities? How do you tear them up? What are the priorities that you have? How important are they? Making sure that you get the right priorities are very important. The people. At the end of the day, security is for the people. And so therefore, people have to be involved in the process of strategy making and uh, development. And the last one is the partnerships that you create during the process and after the process, making sure that you have the right partners during the process of drafting the strategy and also the end of the process. I'm going to stop here, but I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Emil. I have only two minutes left, and I'm going to give you a very quick exercise. I think uh, if I leave the stage without giving you the exercise, I think uh, I'll, I'll be wrong. I usually put this exercise at the beginning of my presentation. So uh, take a pen and a paper, if you already have it. And this is the question for you. The year is 1902. And this is the African map. You're traveling from Algeria to South Africa. Now, I have a few questions for you. What method of transportation would you use? You ha only have five seconds to write that. How many days will it take you? Who and what will you take with you on your journey? And then list five resources that you'll need during your journey. OK? Good? Flipping the script, the year is 2024. Today, you are doing the same journey. I'm sure you know what to take from Algeria all the way to uh, South Africa. I'm sure most of you will say, I'll take a plane. I'll bring my family with me. You know, it will take me a couple hours or one day. And then I'll flip the script again. The year is 2054. You have to do the same journey. What will you do? Yeah, you're thinking. Good, strategic thinkers. I'll stop here and give the floor back. <laughs>